Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. I've got The Secret Lives of Color, a couple Q&A. We're going to look at a bunch of goodies because I need to clear out those baskets and I, they're waiting to show you. And so today is the day. We're gonna go through them. I'll show you some goodies I got in. Okay, so first let's do The Secret Lives of Color. It is a, a color called Sheely's Green. I think it looks like a grass green. Like to me, that's like oh, a typical grass green. The story is all about, once again, how a lot of these older dyes were quite poisonous. This one had arsenic and apparently it became all the rage once they started dying with it. And while well, dying, yes, that kind of dead dying and first dying the fabrics uh, and, and wallpapers and artificial thing, using this as a coloring all over the place. And then people started, you know, dying from it. And they figured out it was the arsenic that was in there. It was quite high levels. Um, but the story starts out with Napoleon. I'll let you read that so you can see what it's all about. Here is my block. And I kept this fabric when I was doing some sorting a while back, I found this little piece of green and I'm like, oh, well, I think it was a fat quarter. It wasn't that little, but um, <laughs> this is a Heather Ross print and it has these little, maybe sandpipers or these cute little fans, little birdies. And it's just the perfect shade of green. So the next time that I show you the Secret Lives of Color, I will have that next row done and sewn on. So we're not showing that today because I've got this on the wall and I wanna show you, will you be my neighbor? I did get the bottom row done and assembled and attached to the top. So I wanna show you that. But first I have a little tip because there was a, uh, I forgot something, so take a look. So when I got ready to do this one, I realized it was a bit short, so I went to look at the pattern and there wasn't any additional strip over here, but what happened is I forgot to do the strip between here. So this block here should have a spacer strip. So what I did is I cut one spacer strip and put it on the left side. And I did that because on the right side, this block has a spacer strip and I just didn't want them lined up. I thought it would be nicer to shift this all the way over and then on that left side there, that'll have the spacer strip. So that's just a little adjustment. But look, 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 so excited. All in all, that doesn't affect things. It's all sort of patchwork and shifting everything over a little bit uh, does not, they're not lining up. So it's not like ruining the pattern at all. Okay, so here I am with all of them sewn. I'm, I'm stretching my arms and standing on my tiptoes now. So hopefully you can see the whole thing. <laughs> so I've got it all done. Uh, now we have one more row down the bottom, which will be over September and October, We're doing two blocks a month on that one. And I'll just continue, I will continue that schedule. You know, I'm not going to change it now that I'm sewing blocks, although I would like to just sew them right up, but I, I can't, <laughs> I'm not gonna change that. All right, so let's also look at, oh, my stars, because I wanna start the, the stars themselves, and I wanna give you a little tip about what to look for. Because before you uh, start to sew everything together, be sure that everything is how you want it. Because uh, it's easy for the fabrics to blend a little bit and give you an effect that you don't want. But first, before we, we, we do that, I chose the blue. I went with the little bit brighter blue and I think that that was a perfect choice. It is brighter than the others, but I'm good with that. And I'll probably then use it. I think I have enough of it for the binding, but I also have orange and yellow for the binding. So I'm not too worried, you know, what that will be yet. Um, I might go with something a bit softer for the binding, like, you know, maybe do that orange. So I wanna show you up in the corner. Let me get the other camera and we'll take a look at that. What you need to do is look along your edge and be sure that it is a good contrast to whatever border you're using. So in mine, I have the exact same fabric. So I do not want that. Plus I have the same print here. There's three of them. And I really don't want that either. I want to break that up visually. 
so that those three prints, I just trade them around. So first of all, to get rid of the yellow here, I'm just going to move the aqua over. And then because I have, then I'm going to move the peach up here, move that one up here. And then what I need to do is take this yellow and switch it for some fabric somewhere else so that I can have a different color there and the yellow will be somewhere else. So there might be a place where there's a lot of peach maybe and not a lot of orange um, hmm, or a blue. Let's see, maybe I'll put it here. No, it's on the outside again. <laughs> I can't put it on the outside. Can't put it on the outside. Let me just move that yellow. I do have a few oranges, so maybe, maybe, or or even a blue. Ah, maybe I'll take this peach here and put it there and put a blue. Okay, we'll take a look at that for a little while. So I've got two blues together, so that might be a little bit too much over there now. A little bit too much blues. So that's how it happens. You just start moving them around. I also wanted to be sure these light aquas, which I are going to stay, are separated and that the oranges are separated. This could use an orange. I could do that. See, here they are in the rolling cart. Let me see what the orange looks like there instead of that blue. Okay, there we go. We'll leave that. Oh, that's nice. So I have the orange sort of around, aquas around. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, so this, I'll, I'll leave it up a little bit and I'll start sewing the stars. I have all the star points cut, so I will start sewing these blocks. There's a nine patch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a nine patch of a star. Down here I will do the two by three, two by threes on the edges, another nine patch. You know, that that's how I progress. So those are some tips on what to look for for your Oh My Stars so that you have a successful top and the colors don't sort of mush or blend in any of the spots and you're happy with it. Okay, let's do, oh no, first, wait, wait. There's two things on the list that uh, we're not talking about today <laughs> on the calendar. One is Scrapalicious and we're just gonna bag that for today because I don't really have anything to talk about with that without pulling stuff out and um, I'm just not in the mode for that. So we're going to talk about my things over here instead. And then also the Fat Quarter Shop's Christmas Mystery is uh, not going to be in August. So I didn't know at the time I did my calendar, but yeah, that's definitely not in August. So that'll be coming up in September. All right, so I have three Q&A that I want to do uh, from, I think they all were questions here at YouTube. And I do need to get more of your questions on here. Sometimes they just uh, mean I need to haul a lot of stuff in to explain it, but we're going to try to get more of those in on the videos. Um, okay, let's do the first one. Um, Michelle wanted to know what people use six strands of floss for. So if this is floss. You can get it on, you know, a floss um, like DMC, or this is Aurifil's floss that comes on the darling little wooden spools. And the thread is six individual strands. You can kind of see that one is, uh, right, whoops, yeah, you can kind of see there that it's open. Okay, so six strands. I personally have rarely used six strands. Uh, it's fairly thick. It's also a little bit, um, you know, you might have, I don't know whether you you feel it's easier to work with. I feel it's a little more difficult, six strands. You gotta have a bigger eye needle to get all those in there. Um, I usually use two or three strands at a time. The people that I know use six are generally tying a quilt, using it to do the ties on the three layers of the quilt. So if you have a way that you use six strands of floss, leave it in the comments here so Michelle can get that information. Thank you. Okay, the other one, another one, there's three. The second one is Connie wanted to ask, um, how do I press my finished quilt? Uh, do I use steam, no steam, etc.? Well, first, I don't press my finished quilt. When my quilt is done, I don't go to the iron and press it. That's just not part of my process. I do sometimes press just the binding. So I have the quilt. Remember, this is the giveaway quilt. So for those of you who are YouTube subscribers, this is the one that I'm giving away. Is it upside down? No, here it is, it goes this way. This is the one I'm giving away when we get uh, less than 2,000 more subscribers. And this will go to somebody 
but like I don't press it but the binding I might come along if it's done by machine uh, sometimes maybe the tension pulled it a little bit more than I wanted and might have just a little bit of a ripple on it or something and I just use a good bit of steam and steam just the binding so I never press the body of the quilt and if I've washed it I certainly don't press it because I like that crinkled part that comes when you've washed the quilt so for those of you who do press your quilt I'll leave comments for Connie here so that she will get an answer as to why you do it and how you do it. Okay, last one is about polka dots. <laughs> so Deborah wanted to know, how did I start collecting polka dots? How do you go about collecting them? Well, I never started out to say, I'm going to collect a bunch of polka dots. I just know I love them so much. Uh, and you know, like the ones that I have here, let me grab it again, like this dot, the dot I have for the houses here in the um, Be My Neighbor and even the background. These were from a fabric line from Moda that was called Essential. So they basically had it in about half a dozen colors, red, blue, black, um, orange, some other colors. And so I got some of those when that came out. And then sometimes those lines are still there, but maybe not all of the variation of sizes. Um, and I just I, I bought them and sort of added them to what I have. But you can look at any of my bins and I've just bought dots and stripes often. So here is my orange and peach bin. And you can see I have dots, 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 and more dots. And then there's also stripes in here and I am fond of plaids as well. So, oh, here's another, here's another dot in there. That's a little tiny one. And then even over here, I've got stripes, I've got dots. And so I just purchase this stuff when I see it. Uh, or if I'm actually working on a project that I'm going to use it in, I might just go ahead and get like a yard or a yard and a half of those dots and stripes, knowing that it's something that becomes more of a basic for me, something I can use again. So that is how I approach it. All right, let's go on the back side of the table and take a look at some goodies. <laughs> So I'm gonna show you some of the things where I was cleaning out my bins when I was taking a video break, when I took my break there to sort of get the back office stuff done. And some of this is still available. Some of it's a few things that came in. So we'll do part of it today and then we'll do the rest of it by the end of this week's video, by Saturday's video. So I may dole out in two or three other segments. <laughs> it makes it more fun. Plus. I don't have to look up so many links at once to share, share with you where everything is. <laughs> okay, first of all, this is a piece of fabric that I was getting some other stuff and I don't know, I just thought they were super cute and it's flannel. So I thought this was so darling. There was also sort of a question about flannel out there. And so I wanted this and another, I'm gonna get another flannel and we'll talk about flannel at some point. But these little guys were just made me giggle. They were just so, so sweet. Little, little children or little people. Okay, I also found my Florence, uh, the flamingo pattern. Another one of Elizabeth Hartman's patterns and she did the norm and the shark. Uh, and lots of other animal oriented patterns. So I still want to do, see she has a direction so you could just do two of them. That would be cute, 45 by 45. So I still need to do, still need to do the flamingo. Flow, has to be flow the flamingo, don't you think? Okay, there were a couple of jelly bars that I wanted to show you because you can still get these and they, I don't know what the, whether they're on sale or not, but they're a little bit, uh, they've been around a little bit, but they're still super, super cute. Um, jolly, jolly bars, jolly bars, I may have said the wrong word just now, but it's a jolly bar, like Kimberly Jolly. <laughs> so it's half of a layer cake and they always give you a pattern. So behind it here is a pattern so that that comes with it. And you can, um, you know, it's a nice pre-cut size because for the patterns and you don't have to do as, you know, as much, they, they tell you exactly what you need. So these both are super cute ones. Okay, I have to show you, I bought this panel. I think I showed you this. And one of our friends on the group, quote along with Pat Sloan, and I, I don't, the camera's too close. So let me see if I can 
shifted here and stand away. This is from Acadia. This is the panel series that R Riley Blake did of the national parks. And so one of our friends took this and just added a few blocks to it. And it's so darling. So I didn't write her name down, but I'll pop it up on the screen. Here is her quilt uh, using that panel. And the panel is still available. There's still a few of them. These are going to, you know, they'll probably be gone fairly soon. There's still some of different parks, but they, you know, they just, um, you know, rotate out the, those, those type of fabrics. Okay, speaking of stripes, I was ordering some things <laughs> and I saw this stripe and I thought, you know, I don't have that. It looks like men's suiting, doesn't it? I just thought it would be a really great stripe to keep on hand for bindings, for putting in projects. So that's one of those where it'd be like a dot or a stripe. I just buy it so that I know that I have it. <clears throat> now another panel I've had for a little while and they're still out there. I think there's, they've been producing it for a while. Um, they're the digital fabrics, which are super, super nice. If you've never done a digital fabric, they are gorgeous. But I'm gonna again, I should have I should planned this better, huh? So I could stand over here for both of them. This is so pretty. I don't know if I'd like to have it maybe just quilted as is. Say, nature is, what does it say? I forget what it says. Nature is my home. Yeah, look at that. But it's great for the back of a quilt. So if you're making a quilt that this coloration would fit with, this is a super backing and it's a nice size lap quilt backing. So they are, that's still available. And you've seen these a couple of times. They've done them for Christmas panels and a few other things. But this nature one, I think is just so beautiful. I've seen it quilted up a few times and it always turns out spectacular. Okay, so I have to show you one funky thing here. <laughs> when I got my watch, you know, when I got my watch, cause <clears throat> I wanted a slightly smaller band than I had been wearing on my prior watches from after I broke my wrist because I just didn't want that wide band so I could get used to and see if it was comfortable. So anyway, so watch came on this little pillow and I thought, ah, oh, this is a, it's just a silly pillow form. It's just got a fold thing and it's just stuffed with stuff. But I thought I can make a little mini pillow of something. So, and I can put, and I can cover this and have a little miniature so cute so I had to keep it silly right yeah silly but I had to keep it okay the other thing I spotted was a gnome needle minder so for those of you who did not watch my video yesterday what what if you missed it Norm is on his adventures and so everything gnome now is catching my attention and we're going to have lots of adventures with Norm you're going to need to keep track um, one of the ambassadors suggested that maybe when I have the screen for the videos here, that whenever there's a norm segment, I put some sort of little maybe map or globe or something. So I'm going to look at that. Um, but the needle minder is so cute, designed by Bev. She does the cutest needle minders of all, of all. Okay, so remember this is, a lot of what I'm showing you today is things that I've had for a little while. And you need to, you know, I'm keeping them. And so I needed to, you know, get them out of the other stuff. Anyways, this is one that I probably have showed you before, this wilderness. And it's a free pattern, but then there's this, you know, set of fabric that it was featured. So here's the pattern. And I think actually somebody in our community made this recently. It looks so darling. But I really love it. I just think it would be fun to make. And so I bought the fabrics. And... Also, I am in love with the owl. Now, you know, I'm going to link you to the fabric line. It's called Little Forester, and I'll link you to the fabric line. I don't know which ones will still be there. There were still some at the time that I got ready to tape this. But here are the fabrics. And I just thought, oh, they're just so neat. I just enjoy this color combination and what is in here, like the bark. There's squirrels. <laughs> Those naughty squirrels, the trees, there's some other faces, little footprints, the bees, the bees, the bees, I love bees. And then of course, this piece of this owl fabric that I got more of because, ah, the owl, I just love, love, love owls. Okay, so that is something that I'm going to keep 
for a while till I decide, you know, hopefully I'll I'll make it. If for some reason I don't make it, then it will it will go to a new home. So let me just show you one more thing. I still have a bunch. Okay. Here was a way that you can buy a group of some sort of style of fabric. So these are plaids. Let me see if you can see it that well. Yeah, you can see it. So it's a plaid, but in a bunch of different colors it came out. And so often stores will package that, those colors up so that you can get a piece of all of them. It helps with matching uh, so that if you have it now, you can match and get more if you need it for a project. Um, and it's called Essentials Buffalo Check. And generally when it says essentials, it means it's around for a little while. It's like a basic. So there you go. A bunch of fun stuff. I hope that you um, are working on your Oh My Stars uh, and have a, your stars ready to sew because that's what I'll be doing. All right. I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.